Good morning, everybody. Hope you are having a great uh, weekend and uh, things are going well. Uh, it is stormy in Florida today. Um, I don't know what's going on, but it is pouring down rain and it is supposed to pour down rain all day long. A little Pacific Northwest action going on around here. Anyway, uh, let's pray, and then we're going to be in Matthew 15, starting in verse 21 today. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and ask that you would receive our worship. God, as we sing this song to you, would you draw near, and um, would you be uh, pleased with the praise that we bring you? And um, we're so grateful that we can worship you today. We're so grateful that we can be close to you and that you reveal yourself to us and that you allow us to come close and be in your presence. And that's what we want, Lord. We just want to be in your presence. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's worship and we're going to come back and then we'll be in Matthew.
Father, thank you again for today and for this time to be in your word. I ask, Lord, as we read these scriptures, would you help us to become more like what you want us to be and help us to learn things that would be applicable and better for our life. We love you so much. Thank you for your patience with us. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. And thank you that we can come and pray to you even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, good morning once again. Not sure if you can hear it, but it is stormy outside. Uh, there's probably like this dull hum going on in the back of my video from just the raindrops that are like this big around hitting the, the roof. Um, and if that wasn't enough, there is this bird's nest outside my office. And there's a baby bird in there right now. And this thing is squawking nonstop. Like, it's hungry, and I'm sitting here. I can see the mom and the dad flying in and out, and it just won't shut up. It's, like, going on and on and on. And so, I don't know if you hear it or not, but this baby bird is letting mom and dad know it's hungry. Uh, which is kind of cool, because as I was preparing and I was getting ready for this message, and I heard that, I thought... Man, that's kind of a good illustration for where we're going today in our teaching. And we're going to be talking a little bit today about persistence. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 21, if I, there's an example of persistence, this is a good one. So, let's read it. And I'm sure some of you are going to go, oh, you're going to gasp at some of the things that are said in this verse. Um, but let's read it, and then we're going to try to break it down. Here we go. Matthew 15, verse 21. Jesus went away from there and withdrew into the district of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from that region came out and began to cry out, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is cruelly demon-possessed. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and implored him, saying, Send her away, she, because she keeps shouting at us. But he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and he said, It's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And then Jesus said to her, O oh, woman, your faith is great. It shall be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed at once. All right. Lots of mixed feelings out there as we read this and think about it. I'm sure, um, you know, Jesus just called this woman a dog uh what so anyway let's uh let's get into this for a minute because we're going to be talking about persistence now our tendency is to get hung up on that one line about it is not good for me to give the children's bread and throw it to the dogs we're going to touch on that in a minute but I think rather than get hung up on Jesus's comment here, we need to get hung up on this woman's persistence and her faith. So let's start here from the beginning. Jesus went away from there and withdrew into the district of Tyre and Sidon. And then Canaanite woman from that region came out and began to cry out, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of G David. My daughter is cruelly demon possessed. Now, Jesus has been traveling, he's been touring, he's been uh, feeding thousands of people. Um, some of you guys are exhausted after making dinner at home for a family of four at night. Uh, imagine preparing a meal for 5,000 plus uh, families uh, and then getting into, or then walking on water, rowing across the sea in the stormy, stormy weather. Jesus is ready for some R&R, &R, 
He's ready for some downtime, right? So it says that he went to a place where he could withdraw, where maybe the crowds didn't quite know him as much in Tyre and Sidon. Sometimes it's good to withdraw, right? Sometimes it's good to get away and rest from some work and get with God and without the noise and the work and the crowds. And if Jesus did it, then it's probably good for us to do it too. And somehow this Gentile woman, okay, she's not Jewish, she's a Gentile woman, she's a Canaanite, finds out that Jesus is in the area, which is... I mean, his fame must have been spreading, right? No, and, and no phones, no TV, no social media. Like, this is word of mouth. His fame is spreading. She hears about uh, Jesus, and here she comes. Now, the Canaanites, if you don't remember, were kind of ancient enemies of the Jews. Remember, Israel had gone to war with them over the Promised Land. And the conquests... Uh, as they were entering in, um, they defeated the Canaanites. And there was probably some mixed feelings going on between the Canaanites and the Jews at this time. And uh, here's this Canaanite woman in this port town. Um, Tyre and Sidon were both port towns and kind of this hub for trade and things coming in and out. And... Most of us listening to this message are Gentiles too. She's a Gentile. She's non, not Jewish. Okay, Many of us are Gentiles, not Jewish. Uh, but many of us um, here can relate in that sense with this Gentile woman. So she comes and she finds Jesus during his I'm getting some R&R time. And she says, have mercy on me, son of David. My daughter is cruelly possessed. Now, this is a, a, a terrible situation, right? Every, anyone who has kids knows that, if you're, that if, if you're going through a situation where your kid is being tormented in any way whatsoever, it's awful. And so she comes to Jesus pleading. And she calls him Lord, son of David. So she had knowledge of the Messiah, the king of the Jews, who would come from the line of the king of David. She knew what she was doing here as she approached him and pleaded with him for help. And I ask myself, you know, do I come to Jesus like that? Not always. I mean, sometimes, actually many times, I just think about how I can fix it, or what are the next few steps, or what's the next work I'll do, or how do I intervene and, and um, you know, remedy this, or, uh, if, whatever the result or answer to, to whatever I think I can do to fix the problem is going to be. But she comes straight to Jesus. She's like, even with the cultural differences, even with the ancient history, nothing's going to stop her from coming to God on earth for help. Now, that's the first thing. She's determined to get with God. First thing we can learn there. Now, Jesus doesn't answer her a word, the Bible says. Awkward, right? That's a little awkward. Here she comes. She's pleading with Jesus. She's like, help me. My daughter is in this situation and Jesus just ignores her. But could you imagine like everybody in the room is like, you gonna say anything or are we just gonna sit here awkward <laughs> like what's going on and to make things worse the disciples are like Jesus can you tell her to go away she keeps shouting at us now I think it's awesome right because she is she's that determined she's shouting at the disciples she's shouting at Jesus this is it's on time like for her it's on you are not getting away I'm going to pound on this door until you listen to me. We're sitting here going, how can Jesus not say anything? How can the disciples ask her to ask him to like send her away? How could they look upon her situation and like not have compassion and just say, get out of here? I, and I don't know. Like I, I look at it and I think the same thing. But it's possible that God knew what she needed. 
where her heart was at and what it might take um, to heal not just her daughter, but her also. I mean, God has his reasons. And I'm sure Jesus has his reasons for not answering here. And for the sequence of events and the way that he interacted and treated this situation, I'm sure there's a reason for it. Now, has God ever been silent with you? God ever been silent with you? It happens. Sometimes he just doesn't answer us right away. You go to God in prayer, and you don't hear anything back. And so what is our response when that happens? Or what about when others tell you, hey, just stop going to God for the answer. Do it yourself. Or leave it alone. Or the answer is no. Or he's not going to respond to you. This doesn't matter to him. You're annoying. Do we stop? Do we give up? Do we walk away? I hope not, because look what happens next. But he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she, be she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help me. So we know this. We know that Jesus is on a mission and he was sent to the Jews first. And he says, I'm here for the lost sheep of Israel. My efforts, my time, what I have available is meant to go there. This is the method by which I'm going to reach and save the world. But this woman is like before her time. Because when Jesus is... Uh, crucified and then raises from the dead and makes it possible for all people to come to God, Jew and Gentile alike. But at this time, he's still there for the Jews. Everything is still God's chosen people. But this woman, she's ahead of her time. She's like, I might be a Gentile, but I'm getting to God. And she comes and she's yelling and she just bows down before him and she's like, Lord, help me. And look what he says. It's not good for me to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. What? I mean, so many people are probably mad right now, right? Like, how could Jesus call this desperate woman a dog? Now, we do need to remember, I don't think he's singling her out and calling her specifically a dog as much as he was separating out anyone that was not Jewish at the time. In other words, I've got a group that I have been sent to care for. There's another in the house, right? Because the, the dog couldn't get the scraps from the table unless it was in the house. There's another in the house, but it's not the one that I'm here for. And, I mean, maybe this meant something different in their time. Maybe the, uh, the significance or the meaning or the... Maybe it wasn't as offensive in their time. I don't know. But Jesus said it. Um, I don't know. I don't know why he chose those words, but... Maybe it wasn't offensive in their time. But even if it was offensive in their time, I think that is the most important lesson that we can learn in this. Not Jesus' words to her, but her response. See, many people would get mad or offended or defensive. Maybe people even read this and get mad and defensive just reading it. He ignores her the first time. He says he's too busy the second time. And then he says, I can't give the children's bread to dogs the third time. But she doesn't get mad. She doesn't start yelling. She doesn't get angry. She doesn't even, she doesn't give up. She didn't even storm off. Most people, I bet, they'd storm off angry. They'd slander him to people around. They'd say, hey, this guy's 
calling other people groups dogs. He's whatever and label him. He doesn't see my desperate situation. He doesn't have compassion. He doesn't care. But not this woman. She sees this as an opportunity that she's been looking for. She goes, yes, I got him now. She goes, yes, Lord. But even the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Like, what's he going to say now? That's true. He ignores her. He, he, I mean, she's, what is she thinking? She's like, okay, he ignored me. He's too busy. He says that he's here for the Jewish people um, and that the dogs don't get the bread. Oh, I know. She goes on to the very next thing. She's like, I know. Even the dogs get some crumbs. Jesus, even the dogs get some crumbs. She is not giving up. Persistent, persistent, persistent. Pounding on the door of heaven saying, God, hear my cry. And Jesus goes, Oh, woman, your faith is great. It shall be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed at once. Her humility won him over. Her persistence won him over. We can get offended or we can get persistent and desperate. We may pray, not hear anything. We may pray, have people tell us to give it up. We may pray and God seems too busy. We may pray and feel like we're not deserving. We may pray and pray and pray again until God says okay. She was desperate. I think she cared so much for her daughter who, was, who she was trying to get to him for, to, to get help for that she didn't even think about herself. Or how the interaction made her feel or look. She wasn't embarrassed that Jesus was ignoring her or treating her that way. She was on a mission to get to him and to get him to help her daughter. Her faith and her love for others unlocked something. But it took the persistence to get there. Luke 11, 5, 10 says this. And he said to them, which of you has a friend? Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, do not bother me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot give, get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend. Yet, because of his impudence or his persistence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For, whoever, for everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. And then Luke 18, 1. One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who, never, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. And the judge ignored her for a while. But finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. 
So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? So here's our lesson. Have faith. Be persistent. He will hear and he will answer. Jesus says, how many people will he find who still have faith? Even if they haven't heard right away, even if they feel ignored, even if they don't feel worthy, will they still be persistent in their pursuit and relationship with God, knowing that he will answer? So be persistent. Keep knocking. Keep seeking. You will find the door will be open. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this lesson, and I thank you for these things that we can learn from these examples of people in the Bible who had great faith, great persistence. Lord, for anyone who has grown weary in their prayer and then they're asking, Lord, we ask that you would just give each of us strength to continue. God, I pray if we've been praying for something, I ask if we've been praying for something for a long time, Lord, would you hear our prayers and delay no longer? And God, for those who are asking for specific things, Lord, would you answer and in a powerful way come to our rescue? We love you and we thank you that you hear us and you answer us and you care for us and that you allow us to persistently seek you. In Jesus' name, we love you. Just pray you be with all of your people and bless them. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.